What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about some awesome Samsung smartphone deals used refurbished, most of these older flagship phones, and honestly it's a great way to save money, I buy most of my phones used refurbished as you guys know. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So we got a Galaxy S22 Ultra, this was pretty surprising because at the beginning of the month this phone was hovering around 670 to 700 now you can find these in good condition refurbished for 500 bucks and I'll show you guys on the screen uh, now these are USA prices but if you're here in the USA man that's such an awesome deal to get the S22 Ultra for 500 bucks I mean it's just awesome uh, so this phone has an aluminum frame it's got the glass back it's IP68 dust and water resistant. It has the built in stylus. It's also got a very boxy, curvy feel to it, um, which they kind of addressed on the S23 Ultra. But this one's, you know, having the phone using it, it felt really good. Still a really good feeling phone in the hand. Most people are going to put a case on it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you do have a 6.8 inch display. It's dynamic AMOLED, 120 hertz, HDR10. Uh, 1750 nits peak brightness and it's full 1440p 500 for the ppi it is a beautiful display it's a gorilla glass victus plus and it's just awesome beautiful boxy display uh, i think one of the best displays that you can pick up right now and yeah it gets really bright outdoors as well too and it just a massive panel that kind of reminds you of like watching a little mini tv now this phone is running the snapdragon 8 gen 1 on top of win ui 5.1 and it's a fantastic chip. I think it does get a little bit hotter than I would like if you're doing like a lot of intense gaming. Um, but for the average person, the casual user, uh, the phone is perfectly fine. I've never had this phone like heat up to the point where it start crashing or I uh, did any FPS drops while gaming. It just kind of gets a little bit uncomfortable to the touch if you're doing a little bit more intense stuff on here. Um, now, this phone does have 128 gigs of internal storage and 8 gigs of RAM on the base model. And, you know, I have my opinions about that, but now that you got this price drop, it's okay. Um, also, you do have some not, they're okay stereo speakers. Samsung also addressed that with the S23 Ultra. The speakers on here are just okay, um, but like I said, they're not super powerful speakers. Um, yeah, so the speakers on here are actually my least favorite thing about this phone. Uh, it also has NFC, a very fast under the display fingerprint sensor. And I think the most impressive thing about this phone besides the fantastic display is actually the camera system is still pretty much on par with the newer S23 Ultra. It's got a 108 megapixel lens. It's got 10 megapixel periscope telephoto, 10x optical zoom with a 10 megapixel telephoto that does 3x optical zoom, and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It's using 8K 24, and then you have a 40 megapixel selfie that shoots in 4K 60. It's still a fantastic flagship quality camera. Uh, like I said, you put it, you know, against the S23 Ultra, it's not that big of a difference, so you're not really missing out on too much. So you're going to get flagship quality photos, uh, crazy good zoom on here. The 10 times zoom is amazing on this phone and great video and just great software with this phone. It's just awesome. Uh, also, the battery life is just OK. And this is, again, another thing that Samsung addressed with the S23 Ultra. Um, it's got a 5,000 milliamp battery, pretty decent, somewhat decent charging speeds at 45 watts. It's got the wireless and reverse wireless charging. This phone can only do around six hours of screen on time, I noticed, which is technically a full day for, for me. I've never had the phone actually die on me. Um, but Samsung went above and beyond that with the S23 Ultra, which, you know, you guys can check out my videos on that. But yeah, this phone, the battery life is not bad by any means. Now, I don't know about the Xenos model. Um, but here, if you get the Snapdragon model, uh, battery life easily gets you through a day. Now, next is the Samsung Galaxy S21, the small one. And we're going to get to the Ultra, one of my favorite ones on the list. Um, but what's interesting about this phone is a lot of people actually forgot about this phone. And I think it's because Samsung put the plastic back on here, which was weird when they did it, right? Because you put a plastic back on a, you know, a luxury premium smartphone, which was, it's kind of weird. But this phone you can easily find for like 230 bucks right now on Amazon, probably cheaper on eBay as well. I think that's absolutely insane, uh, considering that this phone is still pretty much very similar to the S22 and S23. Um, so this phone, again, if you can get over that plastic back, 
Um, it's got the aluminum frame, which when I felt it in the hand, since you feel in the metal, you're not necessarily feeling the plastic. It wasn't that big of a deal to me, but I definitely get it. And it definitely, I don't know. It's just something about having a glass back. It just makes it feel or look more premium to me, I guess. But um, it's IP68 dust and water resistant. It's got the beautiful uh, dynamic AMOLED display. It's 120 hertz, HDR10+, 1300 nits peak brightness. It's 6.2 inches and then it's 1080p. 421 for the PPI beautiful display slim bezels um, You know what you would expect from Samsung completely flat display and I really like the design on here the displays looks awesome the design still looks really good uh, on this phone this phone it will get the Android 13 update and it will get a few more updates as well too so you don't have to really worry about that uh, in the USA you do get the Snapdragon 888 version on here um, and again this chip is fine it's still a very very fast chip guys so Whatever you throw out this phone, gaming, whatever, it's going to be very fast. But again, this phone, the Triple Eight chip, um, it can, you know, get a little bit warmer than I would like, and that's you, that's pretty much going to be the theme with a lot of these newer phones. Um, yeah, they just get a little bit warmer if you're doing more intense stuff on it. Um, now, this phone has 128 gigs of internal storage, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, also excellent. Excellent sound stereo speakers on here. Really good full sound. Uh, under the display fingerprint sensor, all of your uh, you know additional features, Samsung desktop support, all that good stuff. And a still very, very good camera. So you have a 12 megapixel standard, a 64 megapixel telephoto. It does 1.1 optical zoom and then three times hybrid zoom. It's got a 12 megapixel ultra wide. And it also shoots in 8K24 with a 10 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 4K60. You can see the shots right here. This still is going to take phenomenal photos, guys. Really, really good shots. I was really impressed just looking at uh, the photos on this thing. Still, you're going to get high quality, flagship quality photos. Uh, you also have somewhat decent battery on here as well. It's 4,000 milliamps. 25 watt charging is a little bit slow for me, but again, it's fine. Wireless charging, reverse wireless charging. This phone, I was able to get through a day. Like I said, if you're a lighter user, heavier user, you might have to charge it for sure. Um, but this is a fantastic phone for $242. And honestly, by the end of the year, it could be a solid $200 phone, honestly. Next is the Galaxy S21 Ultra. This is an extremely good phone. Now, these are trending for around $350 to $400 for a pretty good condition uh, S21 Ultra. And it's pretty awesome. I absolutely love this phone for the price because it actually doesn't feel too far off from even the S23 and S22 Ultra. Uh, still feels like a very, very modern phone. Uh, so it's got the aluminum frame on here, glass back, and it's got the design that a lot of people actually like, the little, you know, sort of camera cutout on the back. Um, also, this does have stylus support, so remember that. So if you buy an S Pen uh, case with this phone, you will have the full S Pen experience, uh, which I think is pretty cool. It's IP68 dust and water resistant as well. What's pretty unique about this phone is that this is the phone where Samsung was doing the S series design before it converted to the you know Note and S series. Uh, but this phone has a really comfortable screen, uh, especially if you have smaller hands. It's not as boxy, so it's a 6.8 inch display, 1440p, uh, 120 hertz HDR10+. It's 1500 nits peak brightness. 515 for the PPI. This phone is way more easier to hold than the boxier Note type of, uh, you know, Galaxy phones. Um, so that's one thing that I absolutely love about this phone. Uh, the screen looks still beautiful, uh, you know, till this day. And like I said, way easier to hold uh, as well too. So beautiful display, still very bright outdoors. And like I said, it's pretty much a classic Samsung display here. This phone does have Android 13, One UI 5.1, and it will get a few more updates as well too. It's got, now this phone also has the Snapdragon 888 processor. I've made a ton of videos about this phone, did a battery drain test on this phone as well too. Uh, tons of comparisons, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, gaming tests on this phone as well. It still does a fantastic job. It's still gonna pretty much feel and run games like a flagship phone. Um, so no issues there, it's still very fast. But like I said, again, like with the other phones, this can heat up a little bit. Uh, you also have 128 gigs of internal storage and 12 gigs of RAM uh, on the base model. So that's pretty nice that you at least get that 12 gigs on the base model. Uh, the speakers on here sound great. You also have all your bells and whistles under the display fingerprint sensor, Samsung uh, deck support as well. 
And I think the most impressive thing, again, like with the S21, is that you still have fantastic photos. Uh, but again, these the camera system on the S21 Ultra really does not feel that far off from even an S23 Ultra. So uh, if you guys want to see that comparison, check that out. Um, that I did, but 108 megapixel lens on here, 10 megapixel periscope telephoto, 10x optical zoom, 10 megapixel telephoto, 3x uh, optical zoom, and then a 12 megapixel ultra wide. You, this one also shoots in 8K24 with a 40 megapixel selfie that also shoots in 4K60. You're still getting fantastic photos on this phone. And like I said, uh, check out the S21 Ultra versus S23 Ultra comparison. I think you'd be pretty impressed to see how well the S21 actually keeps up. Uh, with the latest flagship i think it's pretty impressive even with the zoom shots was still pretty respectable um the 10 times zoom still looks excellent on this phone uh, it's just a really good camera system still so i think this still takes phenomenal photos guys um also battery life on here is again it's just pretty average i did a battery drain test if you guys want to check that out but uh, basically a, a, about a six hours of screen on time pretty much uh, what's interesting is this phone actually has kind of slower charging it's 25 watt wire charging so uh, definitely charges a bit slower uh, 15 watt wireless charging and a 4.5 reverse wireless charging on here it's a fantastic device if you pick it up for 350 400 uh, it's just amazing now next is the note 20 ultra so the price on this one is still pretty interesting because it costs around $350 but it's almost somewhat on par with the S21 Ultra a little bit but the thing about the Note 20 Ultra why it's pretty much retained its value like that is simply because it's got the SD card support um, this was the last sort of like Samsung flagship with SD card support and a lot of people value that so that's why these are kind of going for a little bit more than I would expect them to these days um, but nevertheless still an awesome phone stainless steel frame on here also have glass back ip68 dust and water resistant built-in stylus on here as well too uh really big display so samsung has not went back to these 6.9 inch displays they you know moved it down slightly to 6.8 but this phone had a 6.9 inch display a massive display dynamic amoled 120 hertz hdr 10 plus it's 1440p, uh, 496 for the PPI, but you can only use the 120 hertz at uh, full HD, so just do note that. Now, this phone got its last major OS update with Android 13 One UI 5. It's currently getting security patches. It's running the Snapdragon 865 chip on here. Still a crazy, crazy good chip. Very fast, feels super fluid. Um, check out my comparisons I did to the, the newer phones. Uh, it's just an awesome chip. Whether you're gaming, it can play PUBG at 90 frames. I did a full gaming test. It's just an awesome device when it comes to the power still for the money. Uh, it just doesn't lack in this apartment at all. It's got, again, micro SD card support, 128 gigs of internal storage, 12 gigs of RAM on the base. And then you also have on here uh, stereo speakers, which sound really good. NFC, still all your little bells and whistles, very fast under the display fingerprint sensor. Samsung desktop support is on here, of course. And I think the cameras are pretty good. Now, the cameras aren't as impressive as I would say the S21 Ultra and up, um, but this still has very good specs, right? So it's got a 108 megapixel standard lens, so you get really good uh, high resolution shots. It's got a 12 megapixel periscope telephoto. Now this one only does 5x optical zoom instead of the 10x, uh, and it does the 50 times hybrid zoom instead of the 100 times hybrid zoom. So again, not as as impressive, but still it's pretty good impressive to me. Uh, 12 megapixel ultra wide, 8K24, you know, video, and then a 10 megapixel 4K uh, 60 for the selfie. Fantastic cameras. Um, the only thing I would say about this camera compared to the newer phones is if you check out the comparison, it does a still a really good job uh, taking stills and stuff like that. Uh, but like I said, the zoom shots aren't anywhere near as good as the newer ones. And it can get a little bit softer in like lower light settings, I guess, like sort of like a lower lighting indoors. You can kind of get a little bit soft. Um, but other than that, if you're in like outside, it's still going to it's going to take, you know, nearly identical photos with the, the newest phone. So it's a really good uh, camera. All right, so you do also have on here a 4,500 milliamp battery. The battery life is kind of okay on the Note 20 Ultra. Um, you know, it's just all right. I've never had it actually die on me, but I feel like I can still get around. I did a, actually did a drain test on this phone. You can get around six hours of screen on time, but if you do anything too intensive, definitely feels like maybe around five. 
um, 25 watt wire charging on here and then wireless and reverse wireless charging um, so I think this is a fantastic phone for the price like I said you know Samsung's last note phone you know with SD card support in a really big display and also just a really great chip that doesn't feel like it's overheating last is the note 20 ultra you can find this easily for around 250 i've even seen them going for like 230 bucks it's a very cheap phone now one of my favorite phones of all time um so it's just an awesome phone a beautiful design on here it still looks very modern um everything about this phone just feels very modern um so it's got the aluminum frame glass back it's ip68 dust and water resistant you got the really cool or glow color that Samsung really never went back to but I think it's really cool color that they should try again uh, you have the built-in stylus on here as well too and it's got the 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED HDR 10 plus 1440p 498 for the PPI nothing really is has aged about this display really like basically the only thing that's really aged about it is it doesn't have any type of 120 Hertz or 90 Hertz or anything like that um, but the display design is still beautiful. It still feels like a, a very smooth 60 hertz panel. And like I said, really slim bezels on here still. And just a beautiful design. Even you put it next to the S23 Ultra, it's still a very nice looking display. Um, also, this phone got its last major OS update, Android 12, One UI 4. This phone actually just got the May security patch in Korea, so it should be out pretty soon in other countries as well so that's pretty exciting I don't know how much longer it's gonna get it probably will get security patch for the rest of the year and then that'll be it um, you can install some antivirus software when that happens so that's just a you know a recommendation um, also Snapdragon 855 on here still a, a excellent chip really really fast uh, chip I still had zero issues playing games on here. I dropped a full gaming test. Speed feels still really snappy. Like I said, check out my comparisons I did. It's an awesome, awesome chip still. And it doesn't get feel like it's getting super hot. What I like about this phone is that it has micro SD card support. And the base model is 256 gigs of internal storage and 12 gigs of RAM. Samsung has never went back to that. But that that's a pretty good base model to have that much storage and the SD card support. I thought that was always uh, a really good move on their part. This phone also has a really good sounding speakers, very loud, great bass quality. Uh, NFC is on board, under the display fingerprint sensor really fast, Samsung desktop support. Uh, the cameras on here, compared to all of the other cameras, it's lacking the zoom functionality that Samsung is known for. But the stills come out still pretty great if you guys uh, watched my recent video I did. It still gets some really good shots out here. A uh, 12 megapixel standard, a 12 megapixel telephoto, that's 2x optical zoom, and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide. And then you also have 4K 60 video with a 10 megapixel selfie cam that also shoots in 4K 60. Still, like I said, if you're in daytime, amazing shots. It's still going to take excellent shots. Uh, any type of low light situation, that's where it starts to show its age. A little bit softer sort of photos. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't have the super high res camera and it doesn't have the crazy zoom but if you're just a point and click person this is an awesome camera still uh, also battery life is pretty average on here 4300 milliamp hour battery 45 watt charging on here so it charges you know pretty decently fast and 15 watt wireless and you have reverse wireless charging typically I can get around six hours out of this phone alright so that's pretty much it guys that is your price update and I'll catch you guys in the next one